As a creation science evangelist, Michael Langdon spends most of his time trying to make sense of the literalist and inerrant interpretations of the Bible. He has spent years challenging scoffers, and with his knowledge of Noah's Ark and the pre-flood civilization, he's now made some interesting revelations. Join us as we talk about the pre-flood technology that existed back then and how humans were able to evolve as a civilization. According to a calculation from Bishop Usher in the 1600s, this pre-flood period lasted about 1656 years from around 4004 BC to 2348 BC and included famous stories like the creation of the world, Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel, and the family lineages. The Bible describes this time as riddled with wickedness and evil, and it was probably the reason why Earth needed a reset. Because of that, God sent a flood to wipe out everything except Noah, his family, and the animals they saved on the ark. And now historians use the term antediluvian to describe the time before the big flood. When scientists were figuring out Earth's history, they relied a lot on what the Bible said. They split the antediluvian period into parts based on the days of creation and named them pre-Adamitic and Adamitic. The pre-Adamic period is the first five days in the Bible, when God created the universe, earth, plants, and animals, while the Adamitic period is from when humans were created to the Great Flood. The pre-flood civilizations can also be dated according to geology. Before the 1800s, rocks were divided into three types, primary, secondary, and tertiary. Geologists thought primary rocks were from the very beginning, while secondary rocks were before humans' creation, and tertiary rocks were from after creation, maybe during a flood. Later on, as scientists learned more about Earth's layers, they divided the secondary period into smaller parts like the coal period and the chalk period, which led to the geologic time scale we use today. Even though scientists learned a lot more about Earth's history, the term antediluvian stuck around and was used for a long time, even for the time when humans lived alongside big extinct animals. In the Bible, it says God made something called a firmament to separate water, while some people think it's the ground. This structure is actually another name for the sky. God also put lights in this firmament, similar to what we call outer space, but here's another interesting fact. The Bible also mentions water above this sky, which led some people to think about a canopy theory. This theory suggests that when Earth was created, there might have been a protective layer of water around it that protected it from the sun's harmful effects and increased the overall air pressure of the planet. This new idea meant that a lack of oxygen might have caused the extinction of dinosaurs, and this theory was supported when experts noticed the small nostrils that dinosaurs had and how the air back then could have had more oxygen than we do today. It's no secret that, with more oxygen, living things would have thrived in a super-energizing environment. People could run incredibly fast without getting tired, heal quicker, and maybe even perform incredible rescues. Theories like this suggest that the Earth itself was more or less like an oxygen chamber, and people have found ways to use oxygen in special chambers to help with healing. Modern-day creationists believe that back then, there wasn't any rain or clouds like we see today. Instead, the ground got watered by a mist that came up from the Earth, possibly due to the layer of water surrounding the planet. Now, because of this canopy theory, one can say that before the big flood, the world might have had more oxygen and different conditions that made plants grow really big. To prove this theory, this one scientist grew a massive tomato plant in a special greenhouse to mimic these conditions. And he ended up producing loads of giant tomatoes. Then there's also another debate about coal layers, where some think it took a long time to make them. But others say those layers could have formed when Earth had more land and less water. There's strong evidence that suggests that there was a civilization before the Big Flood. It might have been a small and smart group of people, but something like an asteroid wiped them out.
Some people think that some survivors escaped to the mountains to stay safe from the flood, and they became the ancestors of different groups of people. There are certain theories that suggest that the Urartians from a place called Ararat, the Tuaregs from the High Atlas Mountains, the Mongols from the Altai, and the Tiwanaku people from Bolivia might be descendants of these survivors. These cultures talk about how their ancestors came from valleys high up in the mountains, and archaeological evidence supports this too. Keeping all of that in mind, people also wonder just how primitive humans of the past were. Did they know what to do and build with what they had? If so, how did they manage to do it? The idea that ancient humans were less smart might not be true. After all, more oxygen could have made thinking easier, and as we know, people lived much longer before the big flood, so it makes sense that they were super advanced for their time. In the past, people did some strange things for medicine, and thousands of years ago, they were doing successful brain surgeries too. The ancient Egyptians even used electricity in their mummification processes. So clearly, they knew ways to preserve bodies for thousands of years. Not only that, but ancient structures like huge stone walls in Peru's desert are even visible from the sky. They're made of massive stones, some weighing as much as 20,000 tons, and even our strongest cranes today can't lift such weights. These ancient feats show they had technology way beyond what we have now. As we just mentioned, the Bible talks about a time when people lived way longer than they do now. Jacob, for instance, said he was 130 years old, but thought he was young because his ancestors lived much longer. Before the big flood, people lived over 900 years, and some didn't even start having kids until they were around 65. Nowadays, that's not even remotely close to the childbearing age, so it makes sense to think that these humans might have kept growing until they were around 100. These humans didn't just live long. In fact, Goliath, who was around nine and a half feet tall, might not have been the tallest person back then. It might have been the skeleton found in Italy, with a height measuring around 11 and a half feet. Speaking of skeletons, there's also a lot of debate about whether a skeleton belongs to a male or female. It might be easier to identify Adam's skeleton since he missed a rib, but the lower rib is also the only bone in our body that grows back if removed. Luckily for archaeologists, there are other ways to tell male and female skeletons apart, and that's by looking at feet or worn-out jaw bones. In fact, in Turkey, there were several ancient bones found ranging from thumbs jaw bones and even a femur bone measuring 47 inches. Now, if these bones belong to a complete body, the person would have been around 15 feet tall, and according to the Bible, this is consistent with the time when the sons of Noah were alive. But these tall structures contradict the theory of evolution that we study in textbooks today. The idea of cavemen depends on how you define them. People throughout history lived in caves for shelter, like Lot's daughters, the children of Israel, and even David from the Bible. But ape-like creatures turning into humans? There are no in-between creatures found, despite what experts say, and there's no evidence of that happening. You might have heard of the Piltdown Man growing up. Back in 1912, a guy named Charles Dawson thought he had made a big discovery, claiming to have found a link between apes and humans. He said he had found parts of a skull that resembled a human's in a place called Piltdown in England. Later on, Dawson and another scientist found more bones and tools there that they thought belonged to the same ancient person. But it turns out they were all fake. Those bones weren't from an early human at all. Instead, they were just bits and pieces put together to trick people into thinking they found something really important. There is also plenty of evidence that suggests advancements in healthcare. We know that some diseases were cured by simple things like vitamin C, and instead of just treating symptoms with drugs, humans back then focused more on nutrition and diet. In fact, while hunting is well documented in primitive humans, 
According to the Bible, everything was vegetarian before the flood, and it was only after the flood that people started eating meat. So it's safe to say that the pre-flood civilizations knew enough to get by. Even though Noah and his family survived the equivalent of a nuclear holocaust today, it's worth thinking about why pre-flood technology or practices never survived. But what do you think? Were the civilizations in the antediluvian period really as complex as history suggests? Or are they truly as primitive as most people believe? Let us know what you think in the comments section below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. We'll see you in the next one.